Well, Joe Rotella is here, and we are making what I think is one of the most amazing projects I have ever seen. It moves, it grooves, may I? Sure. Uh, it flaps its wings, and the little bug turns, and this is the coolest thing ever. I, oh. And I, I thought it was like a kit or something, and you said, no, I made it from scratch. Made it from scratch. It's automata, and you know, automata dates back at least as far back as 1515. Leonardo da Vinci made a lion for King Louis XII that the lion walked sits up on its hind legs, opens its chest, and shows the coat of arms to the king. The mechanisms are amazing. So cool. Ours so we're, is a little we're making, simpler. I was gonna say, a slightly simpler, little simpler version of that. So we're using cams, which are really ovals, um, in order to change a circular motion into a reciprocating or a vertical motion. There are actually six types of mechanisms, cams, cranks, shafts, levers, gears, and pulleys. So we're gonna focus on cams today, um, sort of just like that vintage toy from the 40s. Cool, how are we gonna get started? So let's start by building the framework. So I've already cut a piece of lumber to size. I've gotta turn on the vacuum. I've got my glasses, are you I gotta ready? say, I've got safety glasses, safety always, and obviously there's a safety on the saw too. There is. Now that one piece of lumber mm -hmm. gives And of us course, all the measurements for this are up on the website, and you just have your table saw set for it. Oh, ready to roll. Yes. Because you make me go fast. <laughs> yes, I do. So this takes care of the top piece, and the other piece, if we cut it in half, we get the two sides, and because we ripped them together, we're sure they're the exact same width. Now, ripping, just so people know, is the cool term the for- The cool term. The cool term for using slicing, the table saw. There you it. go. And then we're gonna save this small piece, too, to build a support. Because nothing is ever wasted. So we've got our top piece, we've got the two legs, and now this piece was left over. This is the support. And what happens here is you've got your, this is called a cam rider, because it rides on the little cam down here at the bottom. Okay. If we just had a little hole here and a thin board, it's easy for this to go like this, and it'll slip. Oh. The thicker that hole, the more that this will have to stay vertical. So it holds it nice and tight. So I'm gonna use this to increase the size, the thickness of the support. Now, in a real project, we would glue this with wood glue. I'm building a prototype, and most folks who build automatas you build prototypes first to get all the movement right and the, the so gears. So before you go to the pain of like staining the wood and worrying about it and making everything perfect and sanding it down, you're gonna just with some raw wood, maybe some scrap pieces you have around, sort of get the basic idea to make sure your measurements are correct and that everything is working the way that you expect correct. it to. Especially, like in this piece, I had to make sure the bee didn't go so high that he hit the wings of the bird. Oh, and like there's just all that. kinds right. of- right. It's so perfectly worked out. Like fussiness going on there. So we've got this. Now you can see our base is pretty much Do you want me to hold that ready to roll. There you go. How's that? Like, oh, and it even Look balances. At that. Look at so that. So now you would obviously take the time to glue it together. Do you also screw it or do you just glue it? I just glued all this. Okay. But now we need to have the hole for the axis to go through. And it's very important that that hole is parallel to the top table. Right, okay. you can't be turning a shaft like this. It right. can't be wonky. So the best way to make sure that these two holes are perfectly in alignment is to drill them at the same time. So I'm gonna step okay. back here. And I've already got this set. And you've chosen a bit, I assume, that's the same size as the rod that you're going to put in. Just a little bit bigger, because you don't want it tight. Oh, okay. In fact, there's a little gadget there that'll help you figure that out. Oh, I see. So this is basically just a measuring tool that I can use to figure out which drill bit I want to use. It is my favorite tool and it's like a dollar. So, you know, I think that's so often it's like the simplest tools that make the biggest difference to your success. Because otherwise you're standing there guessing and trying to figure it out. So I'm going nice and slow, let the bit do the work. So you don't need to like actually clamp those pieces of wood together, you can just hold them. I'm comfortable holding it. And let's see how we did. Flawless. Perfect. So how about you help me attach these, this base. Okay, what do I need to do? We're gonna tape, and I don't have any fingernails. Do you have any fingernails? I, I will try to get oh. the paper backing off of that double-sided adhesive. 
Let me see. I sort of have fingernails. There you go. Look at that. It you worked out. And of job. course, if you don't have fingernails, you could use actually the tip of that skewer or a pin or anything like that. So I'm even going to let you do the next one. Oh, I like it when I'm needed. So what do we do now, after we have this? Is we're just we're actually temporarily putting this together to then go ahead and so put this sort of through. test. Okay. And we can get the handle ready. I just mm -hmm. used a piece of a yardstick, and I'll let you stick that stick in there. Okay. I'm going to drill a hole for our little bee to go up and down. Okay. Now to do that, I need a different size bit. Of course, because if you use your, is this a gauge guide or something correct, like that? Correct, correct. Um, then what you're going to do is you're going to be able to see that your B is actually on this much a smaller rod. If we look at these two together, you can see that they're very different sizes. So I can go ahead and test out which one we would need. Now, again, do I want this one to be a little bit bigger just as well? Just a hair, just so a hair. So there's just a little bit of room so I can see that. And I tightened the chuck in two places okay. so that... We're sure that it's nice and tight. And now I'm gonna go ahead and lower the drill press head. I do love that you always are using scraps because this is like a scrappy thing and it's gonna become the handle. That's amazing. And we wanna be sure this is in the center. I'm just gonna eyeball for now. Because again, you, this is our prototype. Do you eyeball when you are working or do you almost always mark things? Oh, I mark things. For this automata, it does have to be kind of precise. Okay. I like that it's so, kind of precise. Kind it's of not precise. absolutely precise, it's kind of precise. And so, you know what, you have the tools to make it precise, so why not? Absolutely, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm using a uh, Is that a spool? I was gonna say, spool. does it come like this with the hole As in it? As a spacer, it had a little hole and I had to enlarge it. Oh, that's so cool. So see how we have the beginnings here? Oh yeah. And now we need to put our cam on. Is and that a checker? These are just old checkers, they're perfect. Perfect for cams. And like you said, in order to make it a cam and have that oval rotation, I can see that the hole is on the edge and not in the middle, and that is what is making it move in an oval rotation, not a circular rotation. And they don't have to be perfect ovals. You can cut them scallopy, and then you'll get something that kind of wiggles a little bit and moves. Cool. So More I'm, like a natural movement anyway, especially if it's an animal automata like this one is. So I might need your help with your fingernails. Okay, let me, let me go after that with my fingernails. Who knew that having fingernails was such a oh, skill good. We set? Need another one. <laughs> Where did you come up with this idea, Joe? I'm just fascinated by mechanical things. Maybe it's an engineering background. Mm -hmm. And then once I saw Leonardo da Vinci's, I was like, wow. And I then, can do that. You know, of course, once you think about it, you're like, oh, I can't do that. Are there photos? I mean, there's not, obviously not photos. There must be drawings of it or recountings Correct. of it. Now, someone has taken the original drawings and duplicated it. You can really? find Yeah, you can find it pictures of it. That is super cool and it works and it moves and it and works. That is so neat. this is the tricky part. You don't want to okay. glue this cam, you know, just by guessing. Right. Um, so you're going to actually want to stick in your item and make sure it's lined up. We also need to get the length of this right. So all I need to do is hold this not so tight it won't move, but close. Mark it. Okay. And then this is an easy, easy, easy cut. You want to do this one for me? Okay, what do if I, I have to do? I can see the pencil. There we go, there see the go. pencil. Turn it on, turn and it you're on. gonna just cut, you ready? I'm just gonna cut, yep. You ready? I'm ready, you're I'm sure. ready, I'm ready. I was born ready. Ooh, that Good was enough. way easier than I thought. That was easy. So let's put this back through. Let's now, put the cam. obviously, you're using one cam because we're doing a simplified version, where in the one that you brought to show, you actually have three cams under there. Correct but that we get the idea of how to do this. Now, if you couldn't find a nice thick checker like that, I know that you said that we could use thinner checkers, you just have to glue them together. Yep, and if you do that, on the bottom of the cam rider, you probably wanna put a bead or something because, whoops, if you glue three things together, it might get stuck oh, in a groove. it might get stuck in a groove. If you put a round bead, it's got a nice smooth surface. Good idea. So this would drop in here. And now I know where to glue that. So that if I know, obviously this is not it's together. It's gonna be loose. It's so. gonna be loose. It's not gonna, it's not gonna turn because it's so loose, So let's I put say. a drop of glue. Okay, let's do it. So we're gonna see roughly where we want that glue. I'll let you hold him for a sec. Thank you. 
So we're gonna let that set up for a second. And I just wanna look at this bird that you've created, which is unbelievably adorable. I mean, it's beautiful, but then it's also very practical. I mean, you told me that if we look at the wing set up there, the wings are actually weighted. And what you've done is you've cut the two wings out, you've put a quarter inside, right? So that when you fold it, you Oops. don't see it. You don't see it, except it weights the wings so that everything, again, with the automata, because it's so mechanical, works. And then this is book cloth? It's book cloth. You could use metal hinges, but you have to be very precise where you're placing everything. The book cloth, try to pull it, it's actually incredibly er, strong. It is, it's very and strong. And it gives you a great hinge mechanism. And that is what the hinges here, where you know, I think you, you can see it in this one, it's just tape, right? This is just masking tape temporarily holding it as Correct. an idea. And here are the finished wings, of course, when you do it, and it just looks amazing. And you would just simply add that to your bird. Now, let's get back to this cam. Let's see if it's dry. And the bug is moving! That's so awesome! <laughs> I love this, Joe, and I want to try it. You made it so easy.